Hi, this hi. Um, I welcome Susan to E Curious Minds. I need your audio visual permissions to post the video on different groups. So please show me a thumbs up and for uh, people who uh, are choosing to keep their videos off, I take it as a yes. A name who doesn't need any introduction, a guide, my mentor, believer in IVPYP, an influencer and, a, and an extremely down to earth person. It is an honor to have you with us on eCurious Mind Book Reading Club. Thank you, Susan, for coming. You, your support has been unconditional. You have endorsed eCurious Mind on your group. You, uh, you, we had a chat when I ran the idea with you, how, how you supported me, how you understood where I'm coming from. It, it means a lot to me. Whenever, anytime in future, we have a success story to share, Susan, you are you are a pillar to it. Thank you so much, Pallavi. Thank you. you. Are, no, thanks to you, Susan. You are you are a true example of international inquiry based teacher, a leader, um, a person who motivates everybody without any judgments Thank attached. You. And you spread learning, and it and you make it look like a cakewalk. So on behalf Don't. of on behalf of everybody, on behalf of my eCurious Mind Book Read Club members, I welcome you to the group. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. I see all of your hellos there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I feel like I've just walked into a room. You know, when you walk into um, like a meeting or a conference and you don't, you're scared because you don't know anybody, or at least that's me. I get, I get anxious because I don't know anybody. I feel like I've just walked into a room of friends. I'm like, oh, I, I, because I recognize the names. Some of the faces, um, so it's good to be here. I might. This was a very last-minute thing. Um, Pallavi communicated with me yesterday, and um, I have been aware of your book club. I think it's fantastic, uh, and I'm actually coming to you from a cottage that I'm renting in Scotland for the next month. So the light's not very good, but um, here I am. <laughs> so you're your light um, yourself. You don't need artificial lights. <laughs> so keep the compliments coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. Um, I can, you know, I, you're, you're talking about chapter seven and um, personal inquiry. And I'm excited to go through this with you because believe it or not, I have not read Kath Murdoch's book. I have not read The Power of Inquiry. <laughs> And I was thinking that this morning as I was drying my hair, I thought, I read this book yet. So I think it's um, I think it's fabulous to to be able to share with you and to hear everybody's you know um, perspective. We have we have um, I know that we've got a lot of experienced inquiry teachers here, uh, as well as some people who are new to to the to the PYP. So I'm excited to to be part of it. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. So uh, I'm going to present the PPT. Okay. Here we go. I hope this is visible to everybody. Yep. All right. Yes. So welcome to A Curious Minds. Today we are going to look uh, look at chapter number seven, personal inquiry. And here uh, Susan is going to share something that she has been waiting for. Yes. So um, some of you who, if, first of all, if you don't know who I am, um, my name is Susan Powers and I'm, um, I've been an inquiry teacher forever. It was just the way we did it in Scotland. Um, and I've been with the PYP since 2005. So I've been teaching for 24 years. And I, um, I now am basically sharing my experience with other teachers around the world through my blog, pyptteachingtools.com but also on social media. And I love our Instagram community of internet. I mean, it's truly, it's a community. Um, and you can find me at PYP Teaching if, you're, if, you, um, if you don't know who I am. So um, I have a lot of um, collaborations coming up for our summer. And we are going to be sharing various PD, various trainings that I will be, be um, looking at. and And, how this came about is that I, I asked the community what they felt they needed some help with. And so your answers are what's stemming this um, summer PD. So we'll be bringing this to you um, 
throughout the summer. And we're going to be kicking off next week with a webinar. And this webinar is going to be talking about how to optimize agency, um, especially with co-planning, co-planning the inquiry with the children. I've been doing co-plan, I've been working with co-planning with the kids since, uh, oh, I don't know, since 2008, 2009, something like that. Um, but it's since agency has become this big word, this buzzword, since um, the, what do you call it, the enhancements with the PYP in 2018, it's something that has become much more of an awareness. But truly, when you have student-led inquiry, that is the ultimate goal, is for the student-led part, which is where agency comes in as a concept. Agency is a concept in itself. So, Pallavi, I think you have the dates on that slide, right? Yes. Uh, would you like to share the PPT or do you want me to share the PPT? Um, you, you, you can, can screen can share, share too. Yeah. You have the permission to screen share. Okay. Um, right. Let me see if I can pull it up then. Sure. Um, share my screen. So can you see it? Okay. So I'm just yes. going to share these slides real quick. Um, first of all, the dates for the PD that we have so far. We still have a couple to add to that, but so far, this is what's coming. Um, so we have the webinar next week, uh, next Thursday and next Saturday, Optimizing Agency. And you can sign up, you can register. We still have some spaces left. If you go to pyptteachingtools.com slash sign me up, pyptteachingtools.com slash sign me up, you'll be able to get your space there. Um, and then, um, you may have heard of Misty Patterson. She is uh, a Canadian author and another experienced concept-based learning guru. And she had, will be sharing her pop-up studio as a means of um, implementing concept-based learning and really explicitly bringing greater depth of understanding to the children of um, conceptual, this conceptual understanding. So I'm, so I'm excited with that to see to see her ideas with that one. Uh, June 26th, we've got a couple of things and I will be sharing the times and the platforms and everything as, um, as these are, um, as it comes to fruition. <laughs> um, but we have a couple of things. One of, the, one of the big things is that when I did this poll, 82% of us are teaching English as a second language. And many of our students have two or three languages, some of them more than that. So Maria Vidal is, um, she's a, I believe she's a doctorate in bilingualizing and bilingual teaching. And she's gonna be sharing with us on June 26th. And we've got another experienced um, inquiry teacher, Parvana. She's currently in Portugal and she will be sharing assessment and agency strategies as well. So lots of, lots of fun things, lots of good things coming up um, this summer. And I will also be opening up my online course as well this summer. I'll introduce it when I do at the end of the webinar. Um, and I know some of you are on here who've already gone through this course with me. I only open it up a couple of times a year and um, it's, I just love to, I love working with the teachers as we go through that. So all of that's coming up. So let me move on to the next one. So. Since I haven't read Kath Murdoch, Murdoch's book, I'm afraid, I can't comment much on um, her perspective of it, but what I can do is share my um, experience with personal inquiry, independent inquiry. And as I said, this was very um, thrown together. <laughs> it's very last minute. So I kind of threw it together with my ideas. But with personal inquiry or independent inquiry, I think the first thing we have to recognize is that um, it's, it's involving the children's interests. And where we are heading for with, uh, with regards to agency is that we want the children's interests to direct or to drive the inquiry within our units of inquiry. So we have this juggle of what we know needs to be covered, the standards, but also bringing in the children's, um, the children's curiosity, the children's interests. From there, 
we're going to then progressively be teaching them how to do these personal inquiries. Sometimes they're called passion projects. Um, and this is, it's a progressive learning experience. They're, they're progressively learning what inquiry looks like and what it feels like and what it, what, what it produces really. And so the skills, because we teach through um, a skills-based, concept-based platform, um, these skills are, as we explicitly teach them, they're an implicit practice. The children are therefore, through personal inquiry, um, enabled or, or given the opportunity to, to use those skills implicitly. And it's, it, it's more engaging for the children because it's, it's what they want to know. It's, it's coming from them. And so all of this list right here uh, really just gives a, a quick summary of why we want to be working towards independent inquiry. So because ultimately what we're doing is putting agency into practice. Now, when I begin with independent inquiry, I don't just say to the kids, choose your project, off you go. I like to structure it in such a way. So this is going to look different if you're teaching with early years or if you're teaching with grade five and six. But Basically, you're giving them um, the steps, if you like, of what inquiry looks like. Whether you use an inquiry cycle or not, you're showing them what's involved with inquiry. And that starts with questions, questioning. And so when I have this lead up to independent inquiry, um, it also can be collaborative. If you think about agency, we have three types of agency, basically. You've got independent, individual agency, the agency by proxy, and collective agency, whenever the children have this voice and, and their choices. And so when it's collaborative, it's the children are therefore um, having to make those decisions by themselves. They're having to come up with the questions. They're having to make the decision of what they want to find out. And then how they're going to investigate it. And it can be very structured to begin with. Gradually, as you move through the program of inquiry or even through the school, um, it becomes more and more towards independent inquiry. So there's, Paris, I'm not an early years teacher, but I would imagine that um, it's more structured in the early years, more guided uh, as opposed to um, at the end of the school. And so look, well, let me go back to that picture. So what you see here is um, grade four and they're working as a group. So the summative assessment is what is being used for them to um, do their collaborative inquiry independently. So they're using their um, summative learning from the unit of inquiry. It's being used in a sense that they get to decide where they want to go further with the inquiry and they are setting the parameters um, with guidance from the teacher as well. Um, and this was grade three in, um, in Denver. And this was following on going further with our unit of inquiry, the children probably like our third or fourth unit. So they've had some structure as um, to what independent inquiry, personal inquiry starts to look like. They know about questioning. They know about the concepts, that kind of thing. And so um, it was animal adaptations, that kind of thing. So a very simple personal inquiry where the children had to show their understanding and demonstrate their understanding of the related concepts, the key concepts. And they had to create their own questions or lines of inquiry. So we're starting to use the language of the PYP with them. And then eventually, you can help them to co-construct the success criteria through various rubrics, through um, checklists, wh whatever it is that, that you have. And again, this can be done um, collectively, collaboratively as a group, as a whole class, as a small group, and then eventually they can move into it themselves, um, depending on what age you're working with and how you go about it. But that. That is my very quick summary of my understanding of leading up to independent inquiry and making sure that it's concept-based and the formulating the questions and that they can then demonstrate the skills that they are being 
they're being taught. So I'll leave the rest back up to you. I'm now excited to um, hear what, what chapter seven is all about. Thanks, Susan. Um, I think you covered most of chapter seven. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. That, that's what it's all about. Um, I have one question for you, which has come from a member. Uh, could you please elaborate on agency by proxy? Yes. So when, um, and this is my understanding of it. So if you think about agency by proxy, the, it can be that, um, let me give you, I'm trying to give you an example. So talk, let's talk about action, student inspired action. So one of um, our projects, were in, this was in France when I was teaching in France. So my grade fours were um, involved in, uh, they weren't involved in the exhibition that was grade five, but they were, they were, be, they were um, part of the help, if you like. They were assisting grade five with their exhibition. And so what happened is that this particular group of children were involved in um, a community uh, project that was taking place where one of the paths that cut through the, the, the vineyards, right, or France vineyards, um, it was being closed by the farmers, by the, the, the yeah, the, the wine growers, I suppose. And this was a centuries old path. And so one of the kids in the grade fives had said, what can we do to keep this path open for the local community? So the questions were coming out. And so my grade fours, this, this two, two kids in particular, had come to me with their suggestion. And basically through them, they had shared their choice and their voice for this grade five group. So um, it's basically where they've got this this by proxy, this help, the second voice, if you like, that is saying, oh, by the way, we can do this for them. So it's it's sharing the agency through a second voice. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yeah? Okay. So it's like somebody says, it's almost like the he said, she said thing. He says that we could do this. I think that would be a good idea. What can you do to help when they come to the adult? So the adult is helping with the agency. Yes, Nadia, yes. It's most like a partnership for a cause, exactly. Thank you for summing it up more succinctly than I did. <laughs> so that's basically what I would call um, uh, agency by proxy. And I'll be going into this more clearly in the webinar <laughs> next week. I have examples. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, I'm going to present my screen and go with the PPT. Can you all see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, here is our mission, vision, belief of a curious minds that I want to start with. Be the change to bring the change. Like we talk about local to global. So what change you would like to bring in yourself today, which can have a rippling effect around you and your society, and then we can bring the change. This is going to be the flow of your session. I'm sure, I'm, I'm very sure that we'll not be able to complete the whole thing. So I've decided to break down the session into two parts. So we're going to look at uh, the provocation as the video of a personal inquiry. Then we're going to read and list our, uh, our observations, our recordings. We're going to look at uh, what personal inquiry sounds to you, what it means to you. Then uh, we're going to uh, look at sorting out with, where we're going to read uh, into our breakout rooms about the personal inquiries and the way we can do it. I think till here, we should, I aim to do it till here, but in case uh, we can go forward, then we will look at uh, the discovery workshop, then um, questions uh, uh, that you want to have, or you can, uh, the questions that you have, and we can put those questions into a three split screen. Last is your reflection. All right, so here we go. This is, please look at, Look at the video. While you're watching the video, what I want you to focus 
is on the character, uh, the characteristics of personal inquiry of what do you see in the video. I'm not going to play the full video, just a part of it. And uh, because after watching the video, you will be listing them down on the Padlet, which I've already shared in the group. And um, we'll do a gallery walk of it. Is everybody clear with that? Any confusions or any uh, questions till now? No. No. Okay. Sorry, Pallavi, can you put the packet link here on the chat also so it's easier to access it instead of going to WhatsApp? Uh, Gina, could you please do that? Because it's already there on the WhatsApp link. Fine, I'll do that. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay. Well, maybe we can't see the video. Maybe yeah. you'll have to share. Yeah, you haven't shared that YouTube thing. Yeah, you'll have to swap your screen. Yeah. What happened? We can't see the Pallavi. video, Pallavi. We can't Pallavi. see Pallavi. the video. Oh. Pallavi, share sound and share video. Okay. Probably you have to go on the PPT and then share that video. Uh. Sorry about that. Do you want to give it to me? I could share it. Sure. Yeah. I'll give it to you. So I could. Yeah, I'll play it for I'll you. put it in the chat. Okay. I've also put the Padlet link on the chat. So here you go. This is the video. I'll put it in for everyone. This is the link for the video. Can I try it once more? If it yeah, yeah, just try. Yeah, yeah, try it, try it again. Yeah, I think now you'll, yes, now we can see it. Is it audible? Yes, yes. My name is Kane, I'm nine years old. My Kane is called Make it full screen. It's open song, three things only. And it's really cheap. Kane does not pass by a K without stopping in. He loves tickets, playing games, he loves prizes. So it was only natural for him to build his own arcade. He loves to see how things are built. He takes all his toys apart to see how they work. He can't put them back together, but he takes them apart. Kane spent summer vacation coming to work with me. We sell auto parts in East LA. My dad has a lot of boxes back there to ship parts out, so I cut them up and make my arcade games out of it. My first game I made, the basketball hoop I got at Shaggy's Pizza, and it's really cool. He taped it onto a box, and he was offering people chances to play for like a nickel. He started from that little game, and little by little, they started getting fancier and fancier, and eventually he took over the whole store. I met Kane randomly. I had to get a door handle for my 96 Corolla, so I pulled into this used auto parts store, and I just came across this elaborate cardboard arcade. I asked him how much it was to play. He's like, for one dollar you get four turns, but for two dollars you get a fun pass. Like, well, how many turns do you get a fun pass? You get 500 turns for a fun pass. I got a fun pass. I made this fun pass that expires in one month and you get 500 plays or any of these games. It's a great deal. Then I started making my office. It has like a speaker on the other side I could talk through. I got tokens, my business card, fun passes, and prizes. The first prizes, I used my own toys, like the cars with my own toys. I used to like Hot Wheels when I was little. I worked from the back office and it kept them out of my hair all summer. He would work on the arcade, I'd work on eBay. My next game I built was a soccer game. First of all, I didn't have no goalies. People said it was too easy. So I bought army goalies and those my blockers. I told them, is it easy now? It's pretty hard, so you get two tickets to make it in here. I'll give it a four star. 
hard game, challenging game. Four star. One day, Kane tells me, Dad, I want to buy a claw machine. I said, why don't you just build it? So he got an S hook, put a piece of yarn on it, and then put a little track on top of the box. And I said, what the heck? He figured out how to make a claw machine with a string and a hook. And here's some sunglasses. These are the glasses I like the most. Store sunglasses. He bought calculators to put on every arcade game. And I go, what's that for? The calculators are here for security to see if it's a real fun pass or not. On the back of the fun pass it has security number. So when you go here, you had to turn it on, you put a pin number in it, and you push a check mark button, and the big number comes out. And that's how you know it's a real fun pass. All right. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Take it Wonderful. as a provocation. Wonderful. Take, lovely. Take it as a provocation and go to your Padlet link. Let me also check for the permissions for Padlet link, if you all have. I'll put the link into your chat box. Well, let me, it's there. Uh, it's already there. Okay. And let's write the characteristics of. I'm not able to see the plus uh, this thing for posting on the Padlet. Are the others able to see? Even I'm same not able. Same here, same here. It's not letting us post. Yeah, we yeah. It doesn't have the add button sign. Post. Yeah, the add tab. I was, I was trying to go again on the Padlet link to check that. that see, now is it working? No, not yet. yet. Let's check. Let's we'll have to refresh our page and then try again. Yeah, still okay. it is not working. Check again. It's not consistent. Yeah, no, it's, it's there now. It's, it's there. It's there. Lovely. Yeah. Just write your name. Write your name as well, so that when we do the gallery form, we understand. Give. Let's give ourselves five minutes to do this. By four thirty-five, let's finish this. The characteristics. What did you observe? I'm unable to log into the Padlet. Can you please share the link again? Refresh it, please. I'll share the link again. It's there in the chat box. Still not able to add the comment on it. Refresh your screen, please. Just close the Padlet and open it again. It is then it's allowing to post. Okay. Okay. I'll do it. Thank you. Wow.
I had posted, but I can't see it. Can somebody please confirm if they can see a post by Krishna Nagarjuna? I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Let everybody can write. we share that padlet? Like, if you share that padlet screen, everybody can also. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll do. I'll do the screen share. But wonderful to see responses coming in. Uh, we can see what everybody else is posting when we are on the padlet. We can anyway see what everyone has uh, actually posted. Okay, still I'll share the screen. That's okay. Kritika, think a little more. Add, add a little more. Usha ji, add a little more. R, please write your full name. Another two minutes. Yeah, I can. Last one minute. All right. Let's quickly take a gallery walk as to what everybody has written. So the main the main words which have come out is risk taker, authentic inquirer, uh, learning, observer, questioning mind, communicator, courageous. These are the words which are shouting out of your gallery. Please read everybody's uh, uh, writings, everybody's reflections and everybody's understanding. Critical thinker, problem solver. It's, it's, I'm going to stop sharing now. Let's come back together. That is what even Kath has talked about. The learner, learners being motivated, task and focus, uh, focused on the task, can apply their skills and strategies, less resilient, self-management, they're, uh, they're watching and listening to peers exploring a wide range of topics and interests, exactly what Susan also talked about. Having the opportunity to be in their element, work and learn alone, make better connections, teach and inspire others. I'm so glad to see that most of you could understand and gather your understanding from the video as close to what has been mentioned in the chapter. Here we go. Are you able to see the PPT? Yes. All right. Now, what do you think personal inquiry is? And what do you think is the statement, your statement of personal inquiry would be? So I would encourage all of you to use the chat box and let's discuss for five minutes it's an open uh, open discussion and then let's write that what is the statement of personal inquiry so i will urge all of you to start discussing what do you think personal inquiry is now now that you've seen a video you you jotted down your observations you've seen her characteristics what do you think personal inquiry is this is my question to all of you please unmute yourself and uh, let's discuss From your own experience, you build up. Yeah. You must have seen it happening in your class. Children, uh, after after 
understanding the characteristics so what do you think it is and then together um, let's form our own it is something that you're really passionate about okay uh, it's your own passion and it's not only that Uh, i think combined with that is your willingness to really really put in the hard work and uh, take it forward in some way so it's neither it's, it can't be only passion it cannot be only hard work where you don't have a passion for what you're you know where you're working it's i think i'm getting inspired by ken robinson's uh, words so it's finding your element uh, if i can connect it to that is uh, you know the personal inquiry so everybody where uh, when you're doing it it doesn't feel like work Lovely. and uh, you know i think i read in the book in the chapter itself that you lose track of time you lose all sense of time you're so engaged in what you are doing so i think that is something i would say i'm so glad you read it before uh, sapna raised her hand sapna hi now. good evening everyone uh, am i audible ma'am yes please carry on yes personal inquiry is just not interacting with each other but um, designing inquiries that allow them to travel share and uh, you know uh, choosing the path of uh, an opportunity to face challenges and questions so according to me yes. it's that perfect all right there's another one who's raised hand janvi like driving your own car and choosing your own path to reach, reach your destination and, and oh. my understanding <laughs> is that of personal inquiry great now let us are naturally curious you know so they have so many questions there is a curiosity which is in them naturally that they want to know a lot of things which they are not aware of around them in their Uh, you know in the classroom and they want to find out so there are the natural questions you know which feed their curiosity and that is how we take the inquiry forward or this is how we build our path towards the inquiry cycle i would say absolutely now let's write it's an individual task write what do you understand of personal inquiry your own statement there are a lot coming in the chat box in the chat uh, chat box only uh, yes in the chat only. box yes 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 in the chat box very yes to learn and share share it with everyone it allowed to be done one zone element chat box has beautiful statement i hope all of you can read the chat box please mute yourself Susan, you would like to add anything, or it's it's all right? What's happening? I'm I'm some of the words that are standing. I love the analogy of the car. <laughs> that was good. Driving, taking your own route. Um, I some of the words that stand out to me that I've just not noted down is daring to create. I love the daring part. Um, opportunity. I love the 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 just the word opportunity. using mistakes to learn creative destruction love that one um i love the word enterprising i there's so many that we have so many minds uh and experiences coming together here that it's just um what's coming forward is powerful all of this knowledge coming together it's powerful all of these perspectives absolutely it's beautiful sharing so let me share your chat what you all are posting personal inquiry is when you choose your journey you're committed and are able to apply your learning 
that is authentic and relevant. Inquiring into personal ideas, experimenting, learning by making, trying, and building on what students already know and creating the meaning independently. Wow. Great. Good job. Everybody, good job. Now, once you've done that, let's go to the other part. I think we should be able to complete it. Great. Now, here are some say statements. We come to the sorting out part. You have to say yes or no for that. And I would like to see everybody doing that. I'll read it out. I was going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to read out so that I get to know that what is your understanding. All right. So the first one goes is sort these statements under personal inquiry and not personal inquiry. So you can write yes or no in the chat box when I read out the uh, sentence separate from the curriculum, yes or no? Can we have maybe? No, it's just yes or no. Oh. Separate from the curriculum. <laughs> I'm not a rule follower, sorry. <laughs> this is fun, Pallavi. What I'm fun glad, you? I'm glad. Okay. See, Pallavi, people are writing maybe. Uh... Uh, not done. I will discard that. <laughs> Andrei, no, maybe. Come on. Nadia, I am following the book. I'm learning from the book. Very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> <laughs> because I just don't agree that it has to be from the curriculum or, you know, cannot be outside the curriculum. <laughs> yeah. I, I say yes, because it can be from anywhere. Any, he is inquiring. One of us is inquiring. Mm. So has Learning something answered? from the inquiry. If everybody's answered, yes. the answer is N O no. <laughs> okay, here, here we go. The second one. About content learning about stuff. So is personal inquiry about content learning about stuff or not? Yes or no? screen please can yeah. stop sharing mrs lamba please stop sharing your screen i think mrs lamba you shared the screen by mistake yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay most of the answers are no one says yes two says yes and our guest also says no. So I'll go with the guest. I won't disappoint. Yes, the answer is no. <laughs> okay. The third one. Are you all ready for the third one? Hear me out. Well structured with clear routines and expectations. Is personal inquiry well structured with clear routines and expectations? Yes or no? parts to that question okay you know because like well structured and then yes expectations it is well well structured with clear routines and expectations so take it from a um the the tutor's point of view the mentor's point of view the teacher's point of view okay so i said no to the well structured and yes to the expectations Yes, yes. So the expectations expectations are are Though you are esteemed guest, 
but i would need one answer not two answers see the structure of the inquiry has to be there has to be a structure to the inquiry because that would help not from the tutor's point of view i would say from the student's point of view it would help the student yes. to proceed in a uh, in a certain way where you know he is able to then inquire so that correct. structure i think needs to be there correct so my answer is yes the answer I'm is yes. i have written yes can i say something on this point yes Ma'am? please yes please pallavi yeah. yes. so like uh, it was me krishna here i just want to say Pallavi. that <laughs> okay uh, when we saw th- i mean we'll just talk with the reference of a video and if we say about personal inquiry what i have understood is that when uh, if you saw the the way the child was evolving there was no structured uh, or guidance or expectations to that uh, thing because he just developed his curiosity and he was moving on his own so if you say from a teacher's point of view my uh, somebody has posted that question i also had the same question that won't that become a guided inquiry rather than being personal inquiry that i don't know i'm just asking i have these doubts and when uh, when you say that you have a structured inquiry and you, uh, like uh, susan ma'am also said that you know these are two different things so um, that was what even i was trying to say that having expectations if from a tutor point of view uh, could be yes but structured wouldn't wouldn't it become a guided thing i mean see uh, Good, good question that you pointed out. So when we maybe, sorry, no, there is no maybe option. Anyhow, so when we come back to answering uh, about the structure part, this is even if when I if if I'm a passionate uh, if I'm very passionate about cooking, I will still have some structure running in my mind that these are the steps I need to follow. My planning will come. My research will come. My my self organization, my self management will come. this is what we are looking at from the child perspective pallavi, also yes. yes and in that structure pallavi then you can your personal inquiry would be what you choose to cook and what cuisine you choose to cook yes. but that structure will remain the same no matter what you choose to this thing exactly. and that structure is important and i think even a personal susan please correct me if i'm wrong can't a personal inquiry also be somewhat guided it need not be completely open because they are students yes uh, yes what do you no, i told totally, i told totally agree with you sonia that um personal inquiry is i i feel like structure is important but what is the you know what is the continuum of structure um because it, i as they're learning and as we're learning you know this boy in my opinion had a degree of structure because you know he asked a question and his father suggested something and that's kind of that that to me is a structure it's a guidance if you like um and i think in order to have uh, any depth with with free inquiry to, true free inquiry the children need to have um an understanding of the the process because this boy if you think about how this boy was reflecting um he was able to say what his mistakes were and then how he had fixed it and so i feel like as teachers we are facilitating the understanding of that reflection process um if you were to say to this child he may have more difficulty in um in explaining the process because he's not had the uh education of the with the structure does that does that is that making sense to people i think that's what i feel because with that video was a fabulous example but there were so many parts that were unseen to it and as teachers you know where we struggle with the yes or the no because we're like well well what about what about what about this but this you know so we keep <laughs> and we you know we keep we 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 struggle with saying yes or no when a lot of us went with the maybes because there's so many um different different um avenues that it can take and we have a class of kids who are going to be working on these personal inquiries so we need to have a degree of structure and whatever that structure looks like is going to look different depending on the experience the children have with inquiry but also the age as well that's there's my two cents for you 
my two pennies. Oh, some in the UK. Thank you. This was oh, Suzanne. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Susan. Hi. Yes, made, made sense. Uh, okay. uh, hello. Questions hi. Later. hi. Sorry. Sorry. Questions later. The next. Uh, the next uh, statement. In a personal inquiry, simply following a passion. Is personal inquiry simply following a passion? Please mute yourself, everybody. Happy to read. Please. Yes, the Please. clear Please. winner Please. is no. Yes. That is what the answer is. No. The next question, I'll, I'll, I'll now make it a little faster. We're running out of time. Real work, a rigorous and valued part of the program. Is personal inquiry a real work? A rigor, rigorous and valued part of the program? And the clear winner is, of course, yes. You all are on the same page. Huh? I'm so happy I'm teaching pretty well. I take that credit. Okay, second last. In personal inquiry is about learning in all sorts of ways, using primary and secondary sources, digital and non-digital products. I repeat it. Personal inquiry is all about, in all sorts of ways, using primary and secondary sources, digital and non-digital products. Wow, not even one person has given wrong answer. It is a clear yes. Pat your back, everybody. Last question. Personal inquiry is outside the assessment agenda. Personal inquiry is outside the personal agenda. you yes the answer is no not even a single person has written yes good job everybody because it's 4 56 and five o'clock we have to wrap up the session and susan also has her own um, uh, day packed now what i would encourage all of you to do is go to your google doc because we're going to continue with this that there is more to it i would like you to go to the google doc and let me know, reflect, and let me know that what do you think? What you used to think and what do you think now? Share, share, where do you see yourself in your understanding of personal inquiry and why? I've already shared the link for, um, uh, for that Google document. Please use the link and then we wrap up our today's session. And if you have any questions related to it, you, you know where to reach me other than uh, the WhatsApp group that we share. You will find Be Curious Mind on various portals on Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is in my name, Pallavi Gupta, and Twitter. That's, that's my email ID. 
for anybody who would like to reach me and my phone number. I would like to thank Susan for coming, for making out time, for, for guiding us, for letting us know how wonderfully you will be teaching us in future. Thank you, Susan, thank you. for coming in. Thank you for having me, everybody. It's so nice to be able to put faces to names and, and to see you all, to see you all thank live. Thank you so much. This was a wonderful Thanks. experience. Thank you thank so much. You.